Oh, how's that? Is it better? Uh, yes, I think it's working better. Right? And it's already filled up. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Actually, the scenery uh, where you were before looked a lot more interesting. Where are you now? In a studio? Uh, no, I'm in my room now. <laughs> oh, you're in your room? Oh, that's your... Oh, wow. That's nice. I like your hair. Yeah, I like yours too. I see that <laughs> we have all gone through the same process. Yeah, yeah. You know what they say, great minds think alike, right? <laughs> So how are you, Tomas? Prefieres hablar en español or in English? How? Well, English is okay. Okay. I think that your previous uh, videos were in English. I think that we could keep it that way if you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, however you want to. Este, uh, how have you been? How is, how is, if you haven't graduated, right? You're still in school? Uh, yes, I actually graduated this year and I'm working on that. That's awesome. They have to put some extra time on the review of the final uh, work because of, uh, of everything happening with the pandemic and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must be tough. It's tough everywhere. Um, I like to start these interviews by asking the people, my friends, uh, like where where they came from, their backstory, as, uh, as in like, how did you get into film? What's your history? Well, I think that as most people getting into film, I got there because I liked watching film. And eventually I had access to a video camera and, and well, I just started recording with my friends. And I didn't think uh, of it as uh, something I could work as at first. I, I tried to study medicine, I spent a couple of years doing that, but after that time I realized that I would probably not enjoy that line of work and that filmmaking was something that I would probably be happier doing. So I changed my, my career and I started working as, uh, I started studying uh, in, uh, in universities over that. That is awesome. And then what led you to uh, traveling to the United States to California. Someone told me that uh, there were mm, some scholarships I could apply to, and actually, that was uh, one of my primary motivators to choose the school I chose because they had that program that I could join and. For my first uh, three years of college, I tried to keep a, a high GPA and try to be included in the program. Uh, I applied in the fourth year and I got a, I got a scholarship that uh, allowed me to, to go there and, and meet all of you guys. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so blessed that you came over and that you were able to hang out with us and work with us. You've been a really good uh, friend and a really helpful part of the team. How was your experience? How did how would you express uh, or explain your experience? Uh, you know, meeting us and working with us in California when you came over to UCI as a transfer. Was it hard for you when you first came over? It was at first, and it was also a bit difficult at, at the end because uh, something that I didn't realize at the time, and that I got to, I realized uh, a couple of months after is that. All the time I was there, uh, I, was, as I was exposed to new things all the time. Like, you know when you move to a different city and you need to um, meet new people and get used to new spaces and things like that? That happened through the whole first year of university, but in, in California it was like a constant. I mean, from the first day to the last one, um, that I was there, it was like I was discovering new things about the people around me and about the place. And that was great, but it was also a bit um, a bit wasting in a way because there, there was a lot of information to process all the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought I, I didn't realize at the time. I realized when I came back here and then I noticed that I was more focused on things and that I was like more relaxed. And then I realized, okay, yeah, maybe that was like a lot of time spent out of my comfort zone. 
mm-hmm. which is great, but it's also it's also strange. I have to say that working with you was always easy with all of you. I mean, I am really glad for that because I think that I wouldn't been able to adapt or to make my time there worthwhile if I hadn't met great people as you. So I am really glad for that. Totally. And I, I'm so happy that I was able to help you in that way. I know when I first transferred to university, I didn't know anybody. I know that the first thing I had to do was meet as many people as possible or as many like-minded individuals as possible to, to you know, get a good jump start in the, in the film industry. Because if you don't know anybody and you're trying to get your start off, it's, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be very, uh, very productive because you don't have anybody to help you, you know? And so, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I remember one of my favorite memories was when I took you to the Digifilm lab and we were trying, to, I was trying to show you the C-stand and that I had, bre- I had bent the arm. <laughs> yes, I remember that. And I was trying to, I was trying to show you that if you, if, you, if you put the weight on the wrong way, it'll, it'll loosen up, but I ended up tightening it and it bent, but I bent it back. I think they still have that C-stand. They're still using that C-stand at, at Digifilm. They don't know. They never, they've never found out. Well, so, you fixed it, so I fixed it. Yeah, I, I bent it back. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. How is? Are you still? You're still uh, studying, or you're still pursuing cinematography, right? Or did you change to something else? I I am uh, I'm still pursuing cinematography. I think that for the time being, I will probably have an easier time trying to work as a video editor. Mm-hmm. So from now, I think I'm going to look for jobs in that regard and try to learn as much as I can about cinematography. That's smart. Yeah, even even I'm also uh, trying to uh, be flexible and take other other jobs. I'm gonna build a PC, a computer, and I'm gonna start taking uh, like coloring jobs, editing jobs too, because especially with the pandemic, it's gonna be really hard to jump into you know onset productions. Yeah. So that's pretty good. That's awesome. Uh, how are how is uh, film different? Like filmmaking and production different uh, where you are than here? Well, uh, first of all, it's a much smaller industry. Like uh, we produce a lot of films for the size of our country. Actually, some countries of uh, similar size produce uh, mm, a lot of less films that Spain Spain does. Mm-hmm. But the industry is not very big, and it works uh, slower than uh, how it, it is in, in the States. Like, if uh, you want to work as a filmmaker in there, you can, you can easily find some place when you can do, where you can do that. Like, maybe you will not be working as a, 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 a director or, or, or a DP for a one of the big studios, but yet you can find smaller companies that where you can work and make a living out of that. Mm-hmm. But in here is that it's like uh, every company is like the smaller at the smaller side of the spectrum, and it's not uh, uncommon for people to uh, start a company just to produce one film and then they solve it mm. because it's not it's not profitable that way. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that it is harder to keep a steady flow of working here. Interesting, interesting. I would, I would have thought that because it's a smaller industry that uh, uh, you, you would have less competition and that you guys would be filming the same thing. But that's, uh, or I mean, you guys would be filming on the same group. But that's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> And so what are, what are some of the things that you were able to teach? Uh, what kind of things did you bring uh, from, like, knowledge-wise, did you bring from with us at UCI to Spain? Did you get to teach anybody? Are you teaching? Are you mentoring anybody over there? Um, no, not right now. I, I'm actually being mentored. <laughs> oh, really? That's awesome. Yes. I, I reached a, a former student of my university, and she's trying to help me to basically find my – my way to to the industry. That's and awesome. Who is it? Uh, she's called Lady, and she's uh, she's working as a scriptwriter right now. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, she's kind of... She's cool, but... How is she helping you? She, 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 just she, helping she you make... She's trying to lower my expectations a little bit, too. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm okay <coughs> with that. But, um, some things I learned in there... Actually, a lot of the things that mm, you told me and that I learned about uh, lightning, for example, were were useful in the last couple of, uh, of places I I had to work in. So I think that will be the, the main thing. That's awesome. Very cool. Are you working on any project right now? Right now I am working as a, a video editor for a theater company. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to stop... Uh, the video production for a couple of months, but actually we are starting again today. So after oh. I, after we are done here, I have to to take a bus and and go there again. Oh wow! Well, congratulations! I'm glad that you got your job back and you're back to work. Has the pandemic been uh, an issue over there? How bad is it? Yeah, uh, it has been hard. The, mm -hmm. You probably know, and as happened in the states, we were in lockdown for a couple of months. And actually, I haven't been able to go to go home during that time. I am still in Madrid. I am I'm looking forward for the, to go home and see how my family is doing. I I am able to talk with them on the phone and to video call them and all that. But right now, because of the, how the lockdown works, if I go there, I won't will not be able to go back to Madrid. Oh no! Yeah, because yeah. you have to. Yeah, because they're not open, right? Madrid's not open yet. Uh, no, they're trying to compartmentalize the, the places where more people are uh, pro, um, are probably infected, and it is working. We're going down in in numbers, mm -hmm. and the hospitals are, I think, they're doing a great job. But it is hard to wanting to go home and to be with your family and not being able to. Uh, yeah, I think it's the right thing to do right now. I think it's. We had a problem actually in my hometown because a lot of people uh, travel from Madrid to the area during the first days of the pandemic, and that uh, caused, caused a spike in the contagions in the area. Oh no! So I think staying here for, was the the right choice. Yeah, yeah. What about the protests? Or are there any protests over there? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, it's been complicated, actually, yeah. uh, because some people are protesting for a lot of weird things. Like a couple of weeks ago, we had rich people protesting because they wanted to go to golf courses and things like that. <laughs> and yep. yeah, that was a thing. Uh, it actually, I think it actually stopped now, fortunately. Also, um, a political group tried to uh, support Trump during these past weeks. What? Um, How? They... <laughs> that is so weird. They are like that, yes. Uh, okay. Um, but it, it was a good thing in the end because they triggered a, op an opposite reaction and there was a protest in front of the U.S. embassy. So I think that even in a smaller scale, uh, things happening in the States are having an echo in here right now that is weird yeah that's interesting yeah because over here we're worried that um especially in los angeles like for example i'm not in los angeles right i'm away i'm i'm a couple hours away um and we're open actually starting today uh or no to, starting tomorrow we can go back to work in los angeles and film uh but not, not a lot of us are expecting that you know it's gonna start up right away the only reason why I'm working is because I'm working with individual artists and, and I'm shooting small things. Uh, but because of the Black Lives Matter protests, I don't know if you've seen it on the news. Um, they, we're having riots and, and like just huge amount of unrest in, in like bigger cities, right? Like Atlanta, uh, Minnesota, and Los Angeles. And um, Los Angeles is still in lockdown well, for the pandemic. So um, it's just kind of difficult because the numbers here are rising actually still. Uh, the number of confirmed fake uh, cases and the number of, of, of deaths are rising. 
yet people are out shoulder to shoulder protesting with the only protection they have is a mask. And that's not, you know, we, you and I both know that doesn't really do much. So, um, yeah, it is really difficult. And uh, I'm sorry that a lot of the, the stuff that's happening here is impacting oh, where you are. And, um, well, I don't know. I think the, I think the whole thing might get better pretty soon. I mean, it's all just a matter of time, right? I hope so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of, uh, how far are you, I guess what I want to say is, um, how do you feel about cinematography? Do you have a process or when you shoot something, what do you, what do you typically do? What's your, what's like your, your protocol? Well, in the past, almost every time I I worked in a in a project, it was from it was from scratch, mm -hmm. and with uh, the same probably ten or twenty people involved. So it was quite collaborative in the way that we will talk about the kind of of uh, film we wanted to do, and then we will just everyone in the role work. Uh, <clears throat> was that mm -hmm. it's, change, it's changing now and I was actually looking forward to this because uh, it comes a time where you can cannot do everything at the same time and just start to specialize on something and I think that uh, I will probably reach that point in in a couple of years hopefully mm -hmm. uh, for now I I think that the that kind of collaborative process has has ended for me in a way, and in recent process in recent projects I have been staffed as uh, as gaffer or as uh, or as, or as, as editor and it was more structured in that way. I think that that is the way that is going to look for me from now on. Wow. And so I know that, um, like, for instance, uh, or how do I phrase this question? I guess, um, cause you've seen a lot of, a lot of the, the cinematography that we do here in America. Um, you've seen my work definitely. How does that different, those lighting styles and those, those, uh, yeah, yeah I guess those lighting styles, how do those lighting styles differentiate from the lighting styles uh, that you see in Europe or more specifically in Spain? The people I've worked with, they they usually use uh, softer lights. Sometimes I think that it's some it's a I think it's a, a difference a difference in the in the lighting side that that comes uh, come from the the aesthetic uh, references that uh, people have. Mm -hmm. Like for example, they will try to look more, more naturalistic in a way. Like for example, trying to lead uh, like the subject in a way that every every light source comes from the same direction, and you just have uh, some feeling on the other side, as opposed to a stronger contrast. For example, I think that the place where I have noticed difference, uh, different, that kind of difference the most is in advertising. Mm -hmm. It looks way different in the U.S. as um, in here. Interesting. You know, I've never seen any of your cinematography, I don't think. You should send me some links. I would love to see some of your work. I'm, I'm trying to, to, put a, uh, to put together a portfolio right now, actually. So, oh, really? Like a website yes. or just a reel? Uh, no, I, I have a website. I have just uh, put there some of the of the projects I have worked uh, in in the in the past years, mm -hmm. and I should start working in a real. I I'm worried because I think that I don't have enough things that are that look good enough to to be included in a real. So I will probably try to gather some material before actually try to put that put that together. I think what would help you, uh, it's one of the things that I wish I would have done when I, when I made my reel, uh, is I would, for what you have right now, put it, put the reel together and then get feedback. And then, uh, at that point, after some feedback, you'll see what's missing in your reel. 
Um, and once you see what's missing in your reel, when you go shoot a new project, you can get those images that you're missing and then um, you can put them in your reel. And so that way your reel is, is dynamic. So like for instance, if you have a reel and you have a, a, a series of like vehicles in motion, right? And you have like, you have like someone in the car, right? you have car interiors and then you have like, you know, exteriors of a car passing, but you don't have like aerial footage of a car and you really want to include like a shot, like an aerial, you know, an aerial shot of a car. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's missing and then you can go ahead and, and, and shoot that when you're shooting your next project, right? And then add that in. That's something I wish I would have done because uh, there are some shots that I, that, uh, that I wish I had in my reel that I don't have. And um, right now I'm in the process, when I get more projects, I'm in the process of getting those. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that definitely sounds doable. I, I should try it. Yeah, totally. And um, I know you have to go, but uh, we're like 24 minutes in. Uh, if you have to go early, just let me know. And uh, there's no, no worries. Uh, I'm okay. I have plenty of time. So just, uh, I, I think that we can we can do this as long as you want to. I, awesome. I didn't want to interrupt you. I think that you've been doing these videos uh, 45 or 50 minutes long, more or less, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're about 45 or 50 minutes long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm <laughs> okay with that. So. Fantastic. You're the host. You can do whatever you want. This is your show. Uh, well, this is, you're you're my guest, so this is your episode. So if you have any questions or whatever, <laughs> let me know. Well, I'd, I'd like to know how how you guys are doing, uh, because you finished uh, you finished uh, college, and now what what are you up to? Yeah, uh, the last bit of our group uh, or my clique, uh, quote unquote, just graduated, and um, we had a picnic. Not too long ago, a couple of days ago, we had a picnic. Albert was in the picnic, and um, and we were just all talking. And uh, right now, a lot of us are doing uh, various things. Uh, I know Leatrice, if you remember Leatrice. Oh, I don't think you were there with Leatrice, but you know Leatrice, don't you? I think I'm Leatrice right. Ching. Yeah. Well, she uh she has uh she's part of a production company or a little a little group that they call themselves Outer Heaven Creations, and they're doing uh COVID nineteen videos. They're doing like little infomercials about COVID and um, that's what she's doing. Albert just graduated and uh, he's working on, on a, uh, a video essay about horror film. He's gonna put that out on a YouTube channel. I think he's starting a YouTube channel uh, with uh, about basically about uh, like video essays and just, you know, analysis on, on various things, which is pretty cool. Oh, I'm uh, on that. I'd, like to, I'd like to see that when it's on. Yeah, totally. I'll put those in the links. Um, and uh let's see lloyd lloyd is doing music uh you know he's graduated he needs to get his driver's license still but he's doing music uh he came with me to the protest uh, uh about oh two a week and a half ago that they did in los angeles and we went there to, to photograph the protest and um who else i mean everybody's just doing their own things everyone's just trying to stay afloat some of us are working in the industry like taking small gigs right now or, or working as an intern somewhere um, and some of us are just like taking a break, uh, you know, that, that, uh, what, what do they call it? A year gap. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're all doing, we're all doing good. We're all doing, we're all hanging in there. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. How's, well, you're, uh, you're very talented people. You, I think you're going to, to get where you want. Hope so. You know what they say? Hard work pays off eventually, right? You have to be, you have to know what you're doing and uh, you have to be prepared when the opportunity comes. They always say that, um, oh fuck, there was a quote that I remember telling somebody that I forgot. Basically, the, 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 the bare bones is, um, the, you, you get like lucky, luck is just being prepared uh, for the opportunity when it comes to you. You know what I mean? Because you can have an opportunity and you can take the opportunity and not be prepared and then totally miss your shot. But if you're yeah. prepared, then you'll make it, you know? Yeah, it's like that, that Faulkner quote, you have to be ready when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, mm -hmm. it strikes every day at 9 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm so always you, asleep you at 9 a.m. You better get working. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, yeah. Right now, I'm trying to write a story, and I'm trying to write two things. Uh, I still got my feature fill. I got oh, that, that thing somewhere around here. I got a, I got a shot list, and um, we were supposed to shoot in October, but I don't think that's going to happen uh, this year. I think we're going to have to push it back again. 
I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. And, um, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, fortunately, there's no, like, uh, deadline. You know, there's no deadline. Uh, there's, it's a very low pressure, very independent thing. And so, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to push it out. Hopefully, I can get you out here to work on that. That'll be really fun. Well, that, yeah, that could be fun. I, well, that will be amazing. I yeah. don't know what, what I'm going to be doing in at that time, though. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get there when we get there. We'll, what do they say? We'll light that firecracker when we get there. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, what kind of cameras do you guys use over there in Spain? Is there like a preference? I think that people that are working on the on the higher tier, sort of saying, you know, like ads and, and film and that, most of them use uh, Arri cameras. Mm hmm there's a bit of a, I mean, some people don't like Ari at all because they try to push uh, the industry in their favor. What? So, yeah, I mean, I have heard uh, DPs and, and gaffers in here talking quite bad about Ari. Like, for example, uh, like how if they want to get... Uh, like financing for a film or something like that, then the then some companies will press uh, on the company to use a certain type of camera, and that will uh, make the oh, price lower and things like that. I see. I see what you mean. That's very I, interesting. I haven't seen any of that myself. I just heard about that. But yeah, that's probably the high tier right now. If you go a little bit lower, like kind of uh, people trying to record their own things and and so on. I think that most people are using uh, Sony and Lumix right now. Totally. And, I see that a lot too. Yeah. And, well, you have your photographers using the Canon and cameras, I think, more than, more than Nikon, probably. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Nikon? I don't think we use Nikon for video. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a camera. I, I don't know a lot about like I, all the new cameras, but... I know a couple of people that are still using Nikon for, for video. Mm -hmm. uh, older models, uh, mostly. But I think that uh, all of us are... When looking for, to, for, to invest in a, in a new camera, like, I probably have to do that in, in a couple of months. I think we're all uh, going to Sony, mostly. I think so, too. I think Sony is a very safe bet right now. Um, Sony, I, w I always, I'm a huge Canon fan, so I, uh, I, would, I would vouch for Canon. Uh, they came out with a couple of new cameras. Their, C their, C, uh, what is it? their C200 is going to drop in price by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because I think they're releasing uh, a newer camera or something. There's so something's coming out. And, uh, and same thing with computers. Uh, all basic computers, I think, are dropping in price by the end of this year because new stuff, new tech is coming out. New generation yes, I, things are coming out. So I wanted to keep an eye on that because my, my PC will actually... I, I think I could benefit from having a, some new components. And if the price drops, it will be the right time, probably. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, wow, that's cool that you're. Uh, I didn't know that you didn't have a camera. I thought you already had one. I have one, but it's a. It's a very. Cheap camera. It's a, It's some. It's not something I will. I. It's not something I will. Use uh, if I can use something else. Oh, okay. What sensor size? What's the sensor on it? It's a crop sensor, actually. So. Okay. It's a. It's a camera I have. I've had for a for a long time. I feel comfortable using it. It's a. Um, Canon uh, 700D. 700D. Oh. Yeah, it's one of the reflex ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I have a, a T2i and then I have T4i. Those were the ones that I shot with way before I bought the C100. <laughs> uh, luckily, the C100 still kicks ass today. It's still doing, you know, what it's supposed yeah, it's to do. Very, it's a very good camera. I, I, I should save some money and try to get me one of the one of those and that's probably one of the steps I, I need to take right now. Mm -hmm. I have to say that most people I've worked with in here, they don't own the, their cameras, they just rent it when they're going to 
to shoot something. That's that's where I'm trying to yeah that's that's the direction that I'm trying to go to. Uh, a lot of the people that I talk to, like new people, when I'm trying to work with them, uh, they will always ask me like, "What kind of gear do you have?" And and I get it because it's independent. You know, they don't have a lot of money, but it's always better to. I try to express to them that it's always better. You know, 4K is not necessarily better, um, and they you know it uh, it doesn't matter like what camera I have. It it depends on the story, right? what kind of things you want to do um yeah i kind of wish i don't know i'm really glad that i invested in a camera but i kind of wish i invested more on lights but lights also yeah. when you buy them they, they their value goes down so fast it's it's a it's a pretty tricky it's a pretty tricky investment with lights yeah i i think that is going to be a, a problem for a long time because for example Uh, okay, picture that you want to to shoot a I don't know a commercial for example of a mm -hmm. or a or a fashion video or something like that. You need a lot of likes, a, a lot of likes for that because of the of the aesthetic that you need to pull off. You are never going to have that kind of lighting. I mean, you, you're never going to own that much uh, lighting stuff. I mean, some people do, but they're yeah. not in really good financial situations. <laughs> Yeah, some some people do, but uh, it's almost, uncommon. Yeah, for almost anything, I think that at least in Madrid, it's better to just go to one of the rentals and try to grab some lights. They have they have okay things. Um, if something new comes uh, comes uh, comes out, they usually buy one of the one or two of those just for people to rent them. So I think that it's a pretty safe way of avoiding of sense in your material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just try to externalize everything. Totally. Yeah, but it's also, it also makes producing more difficult because you you always need some material yourself. Yeah. You need either to... whether. Yes. Either whether it's the camera, the lenses, the lights, you need something. That's true. Yeah. I just bought a camera the other day. It was seventy dollars. It was a it's a thirty five millimeter stills camera. It Whoa. came with a twenty eight millimeter lens, and um, I'm very excited because um, I don't know how to shoot celluloid. I don't know how to shoot film, and uh, that camera. I'm gonna. I hope to learn how to shoot film with that camera, so that if later down the road, uh, the whatever film I'm shooting requires to be shot on film, I can do it. You know, and it's uh. I think it's a really good investment. It was only it's not like a huge investment or anything, but it's seven dollars, but uh, or seventy dollars, but it's uh, I'm excited. Do you know how to shoot film? Do you experiment with celluloid? I learned how to do that uh, a long time ago, actually. The, like the first person that explained me how camera worked, uh, actually that that guy was specialized in celluloid because uh, it was still doing the transition time to film to uh, from film to digital. Wow. Um, I haven't used film since probably 2007. Like I used to have a one of the, uh, a reflex camera, a film reflex camera for vacations and stuff. Yeah. But once uh, everything went digital, I think that we all stopped using that, and now <laughs> I think a lot of people are trying to to get back to that because it's uh, it has a different. It brings a different quality to the image, and some people can probably benefit to to be able to produce that kind of images. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah, you're right. It has that quality that that it's very hard to replicate uh, digital. You know, but digital's not far behind. Uh, there are some videos on YouTube where they compare 35 millimeter with uh, you know 1080p. Uh, the same image with the same settings, and and if you know how to shoot it and light it right, it's it's super identical. And um, it's just what the you know it just depends on what the story is. But I feel like, as a cinematographer, if you don't know how to you know you can't really call yourself a cinematographer. You don't know how to use celluloid, or if, use a light meter for that matter. A light meter that's something to invest in. Holy crap! Do you know how to use a light meter? Uh, not yet. I mean, I. I have asked for, for uh, some people for explanations, and I 
kind of understand the way they use it, but I I really think they should uh, start to use one of those, like, really, really dominate the thing. Yeah, it would do you and me good. I uh, I read a lot about uh, the um, the light meter, so technically I know how to use one. I just have zero experience using one because I don't have one and they're expensive. But um, but yeah, it would be it would be really cool to maybe rent one and just play around with it and just to learn about it, you know, just to use it because that's gonna be very helpful for us down the line, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you when you shoot? Do you color your own films or do you have someone to do that or is it like if you have someone to do that, you can, or? It depends on, it depends on the, on the video. For example, if, uh, in this theater thing right now, the, I am the only video editor, so I have to color, uh, color all the videos. Mm-hmm. But uh, a couple of months ago, I worked with a friend on a short film. She was planning to use to apply uh, for a film school. Mm-hmm. And we were more people, so we had a, a more clear separation, separation between the roles. So uh, we will have someone to edit the video, another different person to edit uh, color and to and to work uh, in to work the post process uh, things in in that way. Wow. I think that yeah, most people on the on that shoot were had a clear idea of what they wanted to try to do. So we just uh choose our roles and based on that that's example, awesome I, I was with the i was i was uh, with light equipment and uh a friend of mine who is trying to uh is she's currently st- a student uh, nuke and 3d graphics uh she was uh, the one uh, who colored the, that video that's fantastic What's the biggest set that you've been on? Have you been on a really, really big one before? Uh, actually, no. Most of the productions I've, I've, I've done in here are quite small, and we we shoot in real in real locations. Uh, with some of the people I'm working with, we have used uh, photo uh, studios for uh, video clips and photo shoots. Mm. The, the, you know the kind of studio that you will rent the ones that are more affordable mm-hmm. but I think that the biggest uh, film studio had that I have, I have been still being the one in UCI I mean that's that's probably well equipped and you can probably have better better places and such but I have I am still yet to to see one of those that's funny that you say that because you know UCI isn't isn't labeled a film school yet we have like a studio which is kind of it's kind of weird isn't it imagine what it would be like at an actual film school you know i've been to i've been to to for instance the most popular film school in southern california ucla i'm sure you've heard of it i've 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 worked there before i've i've been on shoots there and i've I've, i know people there and um basically uh the studio that we have at uci is just a smaller nicer version than the studios that they have at ucla they have bigger ones uh they're just you know older messier and and uh the one that we have we're really actually very lucky to have the one that we have at our school because it's actually very very clean and nice Mm -hmm. it's very it's very very uh aesthetically pleasing to 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 walk into the other ones just look like you walk in you're like what the hell happened here (laughs) you know yeah like it looks like uh a warehouse where everything is just out of place or something like that. Totally. It's all yellow. It's all you, just the wood and yellow floor. It's like, what the hell? But yeah, I mean, they have the bigger toys. They do have like, you know, the red cameras and all the Alexas and they have the big lights and everything. But, you know, that's, that's, oh, that's they, that's a, UCLA has a huge amount of money, you know, and Brian Jackson, the, the, he, he's the head of that department at, at, uh, at UCI. And uh, they basically built that with, I want to say like five percent. Like in comparison to the to the budget that you, that UCLA has, Brian could, Brian did that with like what five percent of what UCLA has in terms of money and budget. I think that you have a really good place to learn cinematography. I mean, mm-hmm. I I will feel to have that in here. Yeah, and that's just that's just a a thing that you know everybody has their own. Um, 
uh, obstacles and everybody has their own, what's it called, resources. And I think it's best to just, as a cinematographer, you know, just do the best with what you have. And um, I think the more, or, or not the more, I think the less that you have, the more creative you get to overcome obstacles to get what you want. And that makes you a better cinematographer. So in the end, that's kind of like an advantage to us. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that we all have to to go through that. I mean, if you want to play with the big toys, you you need to learn to learn how to play first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good analogy. I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> that's <laughs> <Okay>. awesome. <laughs> what are some of the biggest challenges that you face as a cinematographer in your situation? Right now, I think that it will be just try to start working on things because I'm. I'm a, I, that I'm going to, I made it in a way that uh, where I'm going to spend a, a year trying to get uh, to get the smaller jobs in different places to mm -hmm. uh, to get more familiar with the, how people work. And I think that that's probably the right thing to do because a, a lot of my friends, uh, the ones who graduated last year and, and the ones who are graduating this year, are doing a post grade uh, right away. Like wow. for example, a friend of mine just uh, finished um, a documentary post grade, and I think she has great projects. But she's a bit worried now because now that she's done, there is not really much much job she can apply to. Mm, okay. So she she's going to have to figure out, and I I don't want to see myself in that situation. I think that that's something that we cannot avoid when we go out of school. It's just you need to adapt to the working to the reality of working, and it's not something that I can avoid. But I I want to I want to experience that as soon as possible. I think I want to do that this, this year, and after I have a better perspective of how the industry works in here and what kind of jobs I will be better doing then I'm going to try to specialize and, and do a post grade. I don't want to spend one year or two years uh, trying to just go forward with cinematography and then realize that I don't actually, I cannot actually work as a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And, and uh, so how do you, uh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, please. I was I mean, going to ask. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I... <laughs> it... please go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, or I was going to ask, uh, how, how, how is um, networking over there? You know, over here, you go to school, you meet people, or you go to parties, you talk to you know, producers at a bar, or whatever the story is. But over there, is it different? Is it the same? What was your experience? I'd say it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, as, I, as I said before, it's a smaller industry, so everyone knows everyone. Mm. Like, if you start working with people, you can probably talk with anyone with just a few phone calls and talking mm -hmm. to the right people because it's it's a small country, it's a much smaller country than the US. So everyone working in the film industry have has heard about someone else or they actually met or worked with with that person. So it's uh, it's fewer people uh, working in in the same kind of jobs, I think. So, networking, I think it's mostly done in film schools. Like, if yeah. you want to, to meet people, to meet people that are working in, in film, those are teachers in film schools, so most of the people uh, will advise you to try to do a postgraduate in a film school, or just a, maybe a smaller course or something like that, and try to get to know some of the people who are actually working and try to work your way up there. Uh, another place will be probably just uh, the, the primary market in the in, in film festivals, mm -hmm. like uh, Malaga or, or Sitges. If you can take a film there, you probably can you probably can talk to a different to different distributors and from them just try to network some producers. 
I actually there's a I can send you the name because I don't remember the name right now. But there was a Spanish uh, composer uh, who is working right now in California in movies. And oh. He actually started just by recording a CD with the things uh, he was all, uh, he was uh, capable of doing, and he just uh, he just went to to the Cannes Film Festival and started handing those to to producers until one of the until, really until one of them uh, called him back and said, "Okay, if you can do this. I think I have a, a job for you." And yeah, that was it. That was how he started. What the hell? That's very interesting. <coughs> That's funny. Maybe I should just go to Cannes and just start handing out my business cards to people. <laughs> yeah, you, you can certainly try. I mean, you never know. That's true. There's always people... I mean, I think that for cinematographers and video editors, those roles are essential. If, if you want to if you want to shoot something, you need that. You yeah. cannot go without cameras or without good editing because a film just does not work. If uh, if you don't have time for develop your acting enough, the film can still go out. If the if the script is not good enough, but you have a deadline, then the film can still go out. I mean that's something that happens a, a lot of times. Sometimes people just sell a script because it's done and because someone is up to buy it, mm-hmm. even if it's not the best version of that story. But if you don't have the proper team working on camera and editing, I think that that's what makes a film watchable. That's awesome. Totally. Yeah, like I like I always said, or I, I've said before, uh, a, uh, you know, bad, sound, bad cinematography, uh, you know, a, a good script, what was it? Bad cinematography can be good, uh, forgiven if the story's good, but good cinematography won't save a bad story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think we have both seen films that have not great stories, but that shot well. And you see them, and, it's like, and you're like, okay, but this is fun. This is okay. I can, I watched this and had a good, uh, and had a good time. So I don't know. It's a, I think it's a weird balance to, to strike. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Uh, the right balance comes from the right collaboration with mm-hmm. artists and stuff. Totally. We have about nine minutes left. Uh, is there any advice you want to give uh, to people who are in your situation who are looking to become cinematographers? Or well, actually, I, I'd love to have some advice for myself. I'm just trying to keep my my eyes peeled and try to to learn as much as possible from the people I work with. Uh, hopefully, this year I will. Be able to, I will be able to do plenty of that. And I think that's the way to go for me. I'll just try to to be as uh, as focused as possible and to learn as much as possible when I work and when I research for myself. That's cool. I actually have a question. When Do you remember the moment that you said you wanted to pursue cinematography? Was there like a specific moment when you were like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'll pursue cinematography, or maybe I could do this. Mm-hmm. I'd say it was probably the first time I thought I should learn more, more of this. I think I like this. It, it was probably 2012. I shot a, a film with my friends, and none of us knew really knew cinematography at that, uh, at that moment, and we had very bad lighting. We had like industrial lights. Oh. We would just try to use in the best way we could. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that we actually managed to get some some quite some quite good shots. I mean, mm-hmm. I was able to show that film to a couple of directors, and they were okay with it. Like, okay, this this looks good enough. And it was a it was a process of learning like how light works and how we could arrange the setting in a way that will tell the story we wanted to, we wanted to tell. And I think that was probably the first time that I felt that, well, this is this is really a, a powerful tool, and I should I should really learn how to, to how to do this 
in a systematic way, you know, not just trial and error. That's awesome. I always like hearing stories of how people, uh, when the moment that that idea sparked into their heads, I like to go back to the origin of the fire of their passion, which is, I just find it very fascinating because everybody comes from a different place. Um, and, um, you know, and it's, it's just like a, it's just like a motivation and inspiration because, you know, there's not one way to get in or there's not one way to pursue this or that. There's just an infinite of possibilities and you just have to find your own. I think that's awesome. Uh, what are some of your favorite movies? Some of my favorite movies. Mm. This one I like a lot because I think that the, the cinematography in that movie is great. Is uh, Stalker. Stalker? Okay. Uh, By who? Uh, I think it's... Uh, I don't remember the name of the cinematographer right now. Um, the, the actors are... Um, Mia Wasikowska and, and Matthew Good. Mm, okay. And um, it was like the, uh, the director of Old Boy made that film. And what I like about the cinematography in that movie is that the use of color is a really important part of the story. Like most of the changes in the characters are reflected in one way or another in how the film looks color wise. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Like different elements in the settings and the the kind of clothing the characters are wearing and that's that's a constant a constant during the film and it's also done with the lights like for example they will use a uh, white colors in the set but they will have uh, some red pra uh, red practical lights and that and when when you see that scene you realize that that's actually making a point about the thing that is happening in the film and i think that's what cinematography should really strive for like to tell the story in a better way and to to basically to it, i think it should be a tool to that should help the way you tell the story to that's like to 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 accent the story right yes I, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the words, but yes, I. Okay, yeah. That, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's about that's about it on time. Uh, is there anything else? Any last words? Any shout outs? Oh, you should send me the link to the film that you just shot. Your your first film, the one that you were talking about using industrial lights. I want to see that. Send me the link. Okay. Yeah. I can. Yeah. I can totally do that. Um, as final words, well, I. I'm happy I've been able to talk to you and I hope that you guys are all doing great and I look forward for to see your job. I hope that you upload it to different places and I'll keep an eye on that. Absolutely. And likewise, thank you for taking the time to talk to me and uh, I'm glad you're doing great and I hopefully I'll get to see you soon. <laughs>